Welcome to the Elite Podcast Network, home of the number one independent wrestling coverage, available on iTunes, Stitcher, Blog Talk Radio, and wherever you get your podcasts from. Follow us on Twitter at Elite Podcast Net and join the revolution now. Wrestling Heads Radio. It's me, Oscar. I'm just filling in with uh, yes, today he's out there in the Dodger game. It seems like every time we're having Wrestling Heads Radio on and the Dodgers play bad, well, it gets working because he lost bad to Nationals and then they're losing bad to the Reds. But anyways, um, joining me now, I got the man who is his team, the Yankees, got or they straight, put it this way, they, uh, they're no longer in first place in the AL East. But anyways, I got the man from the NYC. Tom, what's going on, man? <laughs> Don't remind me about the uh, the freaking Yankees, Jesus. But that's a whole another topic because this is a, uh, of course, Thursday night wrestling has a lot of stuff has gone on during the week. A lot of stuff went on today. A lot of interesting stuff I was uh, reading on Twitter. You know what? I was going to ask you... Uh, I want to start this. We're going to do something new. For all your past wrestling heads, um, listeners from the past, if you, um, you know, this was a couple of years ago, we used to do these things like we'll talk about some, some weird or some, some subject about like uh, in the past, like who's the better NWO leader or all that stuff. Well, we're going to bring it all that back tonight. But I'm going to start off with something current, not something from the past. I think we should start off talking about it. Um, I think it's very interesting. But I want to let's let's have a little debate on this, okay? All right, um, all right. Uh, just now, or I don't know if it's still taking place those NXT tapings, but um, little spoiler alert for all you guys. Uh, if you guys uh, don't want to know what's going to happen on Takeover, but we got an idea what's going on. But unfortunately, Kevin Owens was walking with the NXT title, which we all know. Next weekend, he's going against Finn Balor for the NXT Championship in a ladder match. So, let me start with your thoughts. Like, do you, let me ask you this question. I mean, not just for WWE, NXT, or whatever, but do you feel that, you know, if you're planning to have somebody win the title and you're doing tapings, do you feel that's good for the business to have give out a little spoiler? Like, okay, he's going to be your next world champion at, at any company. Like, it doesn't matter, WWE, TNA, Ring of Honor. I mean, do you think that's good for the business? I kind of spoiling it, like, okay, he's going to be your next champ in two weeks. You, you think that's a good thing? I don't. I I don't like any promotion uh, doing like tapings before a big event that are going to air after that event. Much like uh, TNA did with Slammiversary, you don't do that. You don't tape. Or if you're going to do tapings, you do them after the big event. You know, because then your plans can be finalized. I don't know why there were tapings before, you know, TakeOver next week in Brooklyn. I don't understand that. I don't understand that logic because you want people to watch your product. You have to build interest in it. And nowadays, people find out everything and anything. You know, somebody goes to these NXT tapings, spoilers are going to come out. That is a given. That is a 100% given. It's going to happen. So WWE knows that, but yet they still do it. So now I think they're, in my personal opinion, there's a more of disinterest now. Now people are like, well, now we know Kevin Owens is winning at TakeOver. So people are going to be like, all right, I want to watch Apollo Crews uh, debut in that city. So it, it, it devalues 
he values the main event going in because now people know who's going to win unless something else happens. But, you know, from what we got from the spoilers, it looks like that you, you know, that you're right. Yeah. Um, my t- my thing, maybe you can do a little bit a little debate about this, is like, I think it's stupid. I mean, we just saw this from TNA a couple of weeks ago about they taped an episode for Impact the impact after Slam Reversary, and they taped that episode three days before the pay-per-view, and I thought that was stupid. Um, with this situation, I I, I think that's kind of dumb as well. I I, I could have I could have done something like okay, Owens and Finn Balor does something you could tape next week's episode, and then don't bring them out the next few weeks. Maybe you can you, you have an excuse for this. You can say this mat, this ladder match is so brutal. They, they have they have not been on. They cannot be on TV in the next couple of weeks. You could do something like that. Which now I'm hoping. Which I'm not in favor of seeing Kevin Owens walking out of the NXT Championship. I, I was still hope, I was hoping Balor gets a, a run for the title. But I was hoping that like I said, Balor won the title. But I'm not in favor of of um, of Kevin Owens. You know. Win the title game. Now he wins. Now we all know he wins the title. I mean, what's that going to lead to? We got to figure that out. But now I'm hoping that Kevin Owens somehow steals the title. That's why you see him with the title in um, in these tapings right now. I'm, that's what I'm hoping now. But you know, you never know. But I just think that that's dumb for any kind of um, from any company that you that can that you know pretty much spoils what we just saw tonight. But um, let's see what happens. Uh, let's see. Maybe we're just arguing for nothing. <laughs> we can we can say that we are. Um, we are. Uh, you can say. Um, jumping. We're kind of nothing. jumping to conclusion. You know, before anything really happened. Yeah. You know, yeah. at the TNA tapings, it was a clear cut title change when EC3 took the title from Angle. That was clear cut 100%. This is kind of like, yeah. it's still, it's still a little bit on, on the edge. Like we don't, we don't really know, but we kind of have a good feeling. Yeah. Yeah. First, let's see what happens. And, um, yeah, let's just, let's just see what happens in the next, uh, couple of weeks in, uh, in NXT. All right. Um, well, the, the thing I was really wanting to stop, start off with, uh, this will be, this is spoilers, but if I didn't find anybody spoiler, I'm gonna start off with this. But I'm gonna this interesting this interesting tweet I saw by uh, from Hulk Hogan the other day. But I want to ask you this: we maybe could have a little lengthy debate about this. But Hulk Hogan tweeted that he still is um, targeting to appear at WrestleMania 32. But we we all know the story about Hulk Hogan, his little racial um, thing that's going on right now, and um, I know, and right now, WWE, they're, like, putting it like, okay, the guy doesn't exist. He never existed. He's no longer on, in a um, in any information on, on WWE.com. The only way you can see Hulk Hogan is pretty much on the network. But, isn't, uh, isn't, Hogan, isn't Hogan back on WWE.com? I thought I saw that he was back up on WWE.com. Maybe you're very confused with Axel Mania. Because they're, they're making... No, a, I thought uh, I saw... A couple of Hogan things on WWE.com. I could be wrong. I, I don't know about that. I didn't see anything about that, but but that's but anyway. not really the point. But my but um my question to you is, Tom, do we see Hulk Hogan back in the WWE any time between now and ten years? Between now and ten years? Oh, absolutely. I think he's back by WrestleMania. I mean, there's so so much happens. I would say not even just in wrestling, but in life, that people are quick to forgive and forget. You know, within a couple months, people are going to forget all about the whole Hogan thing. And then he can kind of go to WrestleMania and he's, you know, he's going to get cheered because he's Hulk Hogan. And people are going to be like, wait, why are people cheering? And remember the racist stuff? And people will be like, oh, I kind of forgot about that. You know, people, excuse me, people's memories aren't exactly, uh, long term nowadays, you know, there's some people that, you know, remember stuff like uh like this that are happening with Hogan, but some people, you know, just kind of forget about it. It slips their mind. So 
I think he I think he's back by uh WrestleMania thirty two, without a doubt. Well, yeah, with all this um controversy with the Hulk Hogan, I mean, uh it's hard for me to believe he'll be back any time within the year. Um I mean I, I'm I think he will get in somehow, some way. I mean, people are gonna forget about the whole racial thing. Um, it's depending on how long WWE, you know, we're willing to forgive Hulk Hogan with, with everything he's done. Like, how long would it take? I mean, you just cannot, you cannot just, just do that to Hogan like what you guys did with uh, Chris Benoit. You, you cannot do that. You know, well, I mean, Chris yeah, Benoit. It's two, it's two completely different scenarios. One is yeah, a million times Murder. more extreme than the other. Yeah. The other guy murdered his, his his family, and this guy just did some racial stir. I mean, I mean that was taped eight years ago, and then you're gonna come out with fucking like, okay, you guy never exists. Well, this guy puts you on the fucking map. I mean, without that, this guy, we probably not need not doing this podcast right now. We probably not probably not follow the independent scenes or anything like we. I probably would never. Go to PWG. You probably be not following wrestling all over the, you know, all over the globe if if it weren't for Hulk Hogan. Because I feel like in in the eighties he made it on the map. WWE was part of MTV at one point, and whoever thought of that, you know, bringing in guys like, you know, um, Hulk Hogan and and uh, Roddy Piper and MTV programming, which at the time cable TV was something new and something. That people got interested. Like, okay, cable TV. Now we instead of having like thirteen channels, we got more channels in this cable thing. And yeah. MTV was it, a huge part of it. Yeah, it was the whole rock and wrestling thing. Uh, you know, the whole deal with Cindy Lauper, and you know her appearing at you know WrestleMania and all that. That was really the big boom, and that was all. That was all Vince McMahon's idea because Vince McMahon had the vision of making at the time, WWF into a global phenomenon. He didn't just want to make it the Northeast territory that it was. He wanted to expand it into what it is today. And so, you know, he, I think he realized that getting celebrities and people like that is going to help expand it. So that was all him. And, you know, the one thing about Hogan, and you mentioned all this, was I, I, I know what Hogan did for this business. Uh, and, you know, you can't deny what he did, and you can't deny that he is, you know, the legend in the business, and he's probably the most recognizable name in wrestling history. But I don't give a shit about him anymore. I don't give a shit. This, it, it's like I, I respect what he's done, and I respect, you know, who what he's done in the ring, but, you know, outside of the ring, the guy seems just like a piece of shit. You know, you read all the stories about how many fucking times this guy either buried talent or just he was acting like a whiny bitch to get his own way because he wanted creative control. It's like this guy was a a, a political a powerhouse, I guess you could say. And it's like I, I you read all the stories from guys like Bret Hart, and I, I can keep going with all the different names, and it's just like you can respect what Hogan's done in wrestling, but he sounds just like a piece of shit of a person. And like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of sick of seeing Hogan. It's like, I, I'm under the impression, this is just me, but I was never a Hogan person because I didn't grow up in that generation. I'm a rock and Stone Cold type person and The Undertaker. Those are the people that I look at and kind of see, when when I think of wrestling, I think of those guys, because I didn't grow up with Hulk, and I didn't grow up in the 80s, and I didn't get to see all that, so I don't have that close connection that a lot of older fans have with Hogan, so it's like, I, I couldn't care less if he's on my TV or not anymore, you know, I, and I look for the future. Right now, I have so much more interest in the young guys than the older than the older guys. That's why, you know, like Undertaker coming back, you know, I, I love Undertaker. He's one of my favorites of all time. It's not probably my favorite. But I don't want to see him anymore. You know? Probably the oldest guy I want to see wrestle in WWE is like Lesnar and he's like thirty eight. I want to see guys like Rollins, like Ambrose, like Roman Reigns, 
like Kevin Owens, like Sami Zayn, et cetera, et cetera, the younger guys. And they're not even, they're, I think some of those guys are in their 30s, so they're not really that young. You know, it's just like people need to stop. I think people need to stop having this, like, infatuation with Hogan and people need to start because, you know, the people, the people that want to see Hogan more is the same reason that we have Stone Cold on the 2K16 cover. It's because people can't let go of the past and move on to the future. It's because people hold on to what they grew up with and what they know as opposed to, you know, kind of moving on from that. That's just my, like, kind of two cents on it. Okay, all right. You know what? I just looked right now. There's still no Hulk Hogan information in WWE.com. I just looked right now. There's nothing. And I was checking if they have any glitches or anything, and I, I typed Kevin Owens to see Kevin Owens. But there's no Hulk Hogan um, information in WWE.com. Um, I just looked right now. And you know what's funny? You, you know, you just brought up the WWE 2K 16 thing, and you have an Austin in the cover right now. I mean, it's funny that you mentioned all that. And then I thought of this the other day when I thought of you bitching about, you know, how Austin's in the cover of this year's game. And then I'm all like, you know what? The fucking NFL and NBA are doing the same thing in their video games. Like, just a few years ago, Madden just had uh, Barry Sanders and Marshall Falk in their covers on Madden. And they're, they're and they're both retired. Um, fucking NBA just had Michael Jordan, and I also want to say there was a year that they had Michael. You could choose a, a cover either from Michael Jordan, Magic Johnson, or Larry Bird on their covers. So I was thinking, I'm there. I mean, other sports are doing the thing. Watch next year's um, MLB MLB game. I wouldn't be surprised to put Derek Jeter in there. You know. And I'm sure you love you love Derek Jeter, and they might they might put him in the fucking cover of the next um, MLB video game, and and look at um the NHL you know, they're because they might put Wayne Grisky in there. So I don't I never heard other sports fans having a problem with you know at, athletes in the past putting their you know the, the, you know in in the covers and in, in today's uh, video games, but I mean the only only, uh, you know, complaints I hear is wrestling fans because you have Austin in the cover. And what, in, what, 10 years you have John Cena in the cover, which you, I, I which I doubt he's still wrestling in 10 years. But, I mean, do you feel that maybe a lot of wrestling fans just like to complain a lot because, you know, you know, because you have somebody in the cover in the past in the cover. Is it something you could just find a complaint? Because I never heard no complaints about, Michael Jordan in NBA 2K video games, and people are complaining about Austin being in the video games. You know, do you feel like there's there's kind of a little connection there, or, or, or you know what I'm saying? Maybe. Um, I don't know. It's it's tough when you kind of compare those sports to professional wrestling, just because. A lot of wrestling, you know, guys like Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan is, is the best basketball player of all time. I think people know this. Yeah. People people recognize this. It was based on his skill. Now, Steve Austin and Hulk Hogan, if you look at them, they are not the best professional wrestlers. They didn't have the best skills. They were just marketed as the biggest stars. They were pushed, you know, it's wrestling obviously is predetermined and so, you know, it wasn't based on their skill, it was based on markability and that's how those guys got older. So I think when you're comparing sports and professional wrestling, it's two different things and that's why, you know, that's why I think wrestling fans kind of are like, you know, we, you know, we love Austin and we love Hogan and all this, but it's just like, you know, like I said, wrestling is this whole thing where it's just like so much of it is, especially now, is built on trying to get into the past and instead of moving on to the future completely, you know? Maybe that's how it is. I don't know. I could be wrong. Yeah, I mean, 
Yeah, you're right. But also you got to think about it. I know Austin and, and Hogan, I mean, they didn't have the greatest skills. I mean, Hogan just had a look that, you know, you could say marketing could buy. I mean, you know, marketing, could, you know, be, like to be all over Hulk Hogan. Steve Austin, he kind of brought it back when one time people thought wrestling was dead in the 90s. And then Hulk Austin brought it up due to the fact that, you know, I, I believe because WWE went to a, you know, they want to go to a uh, more edgier programming. And Austin, with his, you know, foul language, he um, he helped that out a lot. There's more guys, not just Austin. There is The Rock, maybe Mick Foley. You can, you can even add Sable in there, too. And um, I remember one point, it was like, I mean, going to school the next day, people could talk about, like, I can hear conversations talking about Steve Austin or or Sable or China, you know, when you walk around the the halls, you know. Um, I don't know how about in the 80s. I'm, I'm sure it, was, it did pre- did pretty good because, you know, like we, we mentioned earlier, Rock and Wrestling Connection and the, the WrestleMania was a huge success, the first one, and then they kept going and going and still going to, these, to this day. But imagine if it failed, maybe the WWE would not be – where it is today or maybe not in business who knows but um yeah and then going back to sports fan i mean the sports i mean yeah they 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 worked their way up to get to that point uh i just read today that michael jordan is worth 480 million dollars i mean yeah he's worth that money due to his um due to his contract with uh with nike or you know or Jordans, whatever, you know, the shoes, the Jordans. Um, due to all that, he still, you know, he makes some money still, even to this day. Um, Hulk, Hulk Hogan and Steve Austin, they can make money doing other things. Like, you know, Austin likes today, he likes to do a podcast. I don't know if he's making money out of it, but I know he does TV shows, he does other things. And, and WWE can even bring him up, hey, you could come down here and do something, a little angle, whatever, then and there. He could do some work with the WWE. Um, I also heard Austin had to do a lot of things with the video game, like the directions and all that stuff. I, I heard, I'm hearing that it, it, was, it was his idea to bring in the NXT talent to the next video game. So he had a lot of say in this next video game due to the fact that he was in the cover. And um, whatever story mode he had for Steve Austin in this next video game that he can – Tell you, tell everybody like, okay, this is what happened back in the day when I did this and that, and he, he created all the features and all that stuff. So I heard also a lot of things to do with the video game right here. And um, yeah, I mean, if there is a Michael Jordan to wrestling right now, it's I'm sad to say it's got to be Hulk Hogan or Steve Austin due to marketing. Um, skill wise, I mean, it's wrestling. I mean, when it comes to skills, uh. It's hard for me to believe because you know there's a either a casual fan or a um, a guy or anybody that's not into wrestling can you know know this guy because this guy does the Red Arrow you know I mean that's a sick finisher but I, I don't I, it's hard for me to say like okay you know who Michael Jordan is you you know I could go to this hot chick saying hey, you know Michael Jordan she she knows who he is and can remember all the the the, the shot in Cleveland you know. Um, she probably knows all that shit instead of knowing, okay, do you know what Andrew Neville is? Do you know her, do you know the the Red Arrow? That's hard for me to believe, you know? <laughs> it's hard for me to say that there's anybody out there that, that can, like, um, you know, think of that, you know? <laughs> but, um, yeah, you point that, you point that out there, Tom. There is a, uh, there's, there's a little huge difference there, but, yeah. I, I, like I said, any video game, there is, there's a wrestling game, a basketball, or a football game. I mean, I think this is going to continue on. A, a past player is going to be in the cover of any video game. Fifteen years from now, we might see Tom Brady in the cover of Madden again, and and you know, I doubt he'll be playing fifteen years from now. We all know that. <laughs> um, but anywho, um, there's something I also. Um, so about maybe we could debate about this a little bit. Um, let me see something. I just saw something right now. Um, all right. 
AJ Styles. All right, let me let me ask you this about next year or the future of AJ Styles. Um, there's people saying he could go to WWE. There's some people saying possibly to TNA. But let me ask you something about AJ Styles. If he goes back to TNA just to do a um, uh, a Hall of Fame uh, appearance, like he comes in and, you know, like what, what Jeff Jarrett's doing right now, you know, he comes back for the Hall of Fame. Uh, would you be interested to see what we do? Would that caught you any interest? Or, 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 or what, will it be not only just you, but a lot of fans, will they, will, will they like to check out the programming if, if AJ Styles does decide to return to TNA for that short time? No, absolutely not. Because right now, AJ Styles is at the peak of his career. This is this is some of the best stuff, if not the best stuff, that AJ Styles has been doing ever since he left TNA. Leaving TNA has been a godsend for him. Because ever since joining New Japan and going back to the Indies, the, the man has probably made more money than he ever made in TNA. He's putting on... 10 times better matches than he ever did in TNA. He is 100 times more interesting than he ever was in TNA. I don't want to see that. That's like, to try and draw uh, an accurate comparison, that would be like, you're in a, you're in a bad relationship, you know, with, uh, with this crappy girl. She treats you like shit. She cheats on you. And you finally get out of there. And you finally get this, you know, amazing girl. She's good looking. She's smart. She's funny. She treats you good. And you're with her and you, you, you feel great. You feel like you're on top of the world. That would be like leaving that girl to go back to the first girl. You don't do it. Even for a little while. You know, it's right now, AJ Styles should either do one of two things by 2016. Either stay in New Japan and keep doing Ring of Honor, maybe a tier less in, in New Japan if they decide to kind of take him out of the main event scene and kind of, you know, work the Indies, work Ring of Honor more, or WWE. Those are the two options. Anything else, yeah, I, I, don't, I, I, anything else I don't think benefits AJ Styles. Yeah, yeah. That's what I was going to ask you next about WWE. Um, if he decides to leave New Japan to go to WWE NXT, how would you would you be down for it? And do you and what do you think the fans would would would, would uh, react if he goes to WWE? Let's just say not to the main roster. Let's just say they're doing what like what what Samo, what they're doing Samoa Joe right now. Would you be interested, or you think, how how interesting do you think the fans would be? Well, it, it, I think it all depends on how he's going to be used. I feel like. You know, because I, I was thinking about this kind of while watching the G1 over the last couple weeks. If AJ Styles does go to WWE, they have to push this guy as the biggest prospect or the biggest guy that's ever signed with this company in, uh, in a long time. They have to bring him into NXT, only keep him there for a short while, push him up to the main roster as soon as you can because... Like I said, this guy is a main event star. This guy is probably, without a doubt, the best wrestler on the planet right now. I don't think anybody can really deny that, that he is the best just pure wrestler right now. And I, I, I think the fans would really like it. I think he'd get a really good reaction because, you know, obviously being in TNA and then going to Ring of Honor in New Japan after he left, he is a very recognizable name. You know, if you think about names um, outside of WWE, if you ask someone, name somebody from a different wrestling company outside of WWE. AJ Styles might be one of the first names that pops up into people's minds. So, you know, he definitely has a lot of recognition. You know, if they know who uh, a lot of these indie guys are, there's no doubt in my mind they know who AJ Styles is. So, it would be something good. It just depends on if he wants to do it. You know, we know he denied going into NXT at first, but he may, you know, give it a second chance. Now looking that Samoa Joe is in there and what's happening with Kevin Owens. 
Um, I wouldn't be I wouldn't be opposed to it as long as it gets treated properly because, like I said, this guy he's he's not getting any younger. He's only he's only getting a little bit older, and he's got to think about what he can do within the next couple of years to kind of mainstay what he's doing right now and not lose any steam or momentum. Yeah, I mean, okay, I'm gonna start with the WWE part of it. If he does come to NXT, kind of like a Samoa world, like uh, Samoa Joe, I mean, I think that would be huge because about a year ago, I heard him in, I think it was in Jericho's podcast, and he said that he, he felt that he don't think they'll ever sign him due to the fact that he's getting old, and um, there's no way they're going to sign him because they, they feel like they feel more focused on younger talent. Then, then a few months ago, we heard this rumor that WWE could be interested. I'm like, holy shit! So, if they want to bring him to NXT, I have no problem with it because, like, there's some there's some names in that roster I like to see him go at it against, like a um, like him and Tyler Breeze. Do you think him and Tyler Breeze have a good match? I think so. I mean, with Tyler Breeze doing what he's doing right now and what it looks like on the spoilers, I mean, why not? You know, him and Tyler Breeze might kill it in, in a takeover match. Um, do you want, want to see him and Samoa Joe go at it? If, if they keep Joe, Joe and NXT, um, why not? You know, I mean, they had good matches in the past. And and it's been a while since those two guys got in the ring against each other. So why not have these two guys get it on? Um, let's see other names. Him and Finn Balor. I don't think that never, ever happened before. I don't think it, yeah, I don't think it ever happened before. That would be interesting. Um, hell, maybe him and um, Apollo Cruz. I mean, if, if they don't make, I mean, if Apollo Cruz wrestles like he did in the Indies at Wuhan Nation, then yeah, I, I think him and Apollo Cruz will be a match that we never I all thought that, you know, ever happened or think it'll be really good. So that's something that would be very interesting. As the TNA part of it, I mean, to be honest, I mean, it it would be a good thing if, um, for TNA's sake, you know, to see AJ Styles enter in their Hall of Fame. Because sometimes I feel like at one point he is the face of um, TNA. There was one point that, you know, when I think of TNA, the first wrestler I think is AJ Styles. There was, there was a point of that um, to see him in TNA. But I agree with you, Tom. If he does um, come back, Right now, the TNA, it will be like, okay, I just had this girlfriend, and I'm going back to the girl who treat me like shit. <laughs> then, yeah, that would, I see you in that, in that part. But I think it will be best if, for TNA if they go after AJ Styles when he's done in the ring. I mean, I mean completely done. I think that would be the best way to put him in the Hall of Fame. I don't think you should do it now. And even though some of your top stars from – the past are either in WWE or or probably in a bad relationship, don't try to make it so desperate that you're gonna have to, you know, get to, you know, get a guy like AJ Styles to get in your Hall of Fame because you have any no idea to put him in. I mean, next year who the hell are you gonna put on now in your Hall of Fame? I mean, if you scratch AJ Styles, who are you gonna put in? Fucking uh Christian? Because you doubt Samoa Joe will be in there. Because Samoa Joe is going to be in WWE next year. So, I mean, or fuck, Hulk Hogan? <laughs> I mean, that that's something TNA got to figure out. And we'll see even if TNA is still alive in, in, in around one year from today. So, who knows? But um, before we move on, I just want to let our listeners know that are listening right now. If you guys have anything you want us to debate about or... If anything you you wanna want us to talk about, you can always call in at three four seven nine four five 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 six six or tweet us the rest of us and move debate on something that um that that maybe was in your mind he wants to debate and maybe me and Tom will come up with it or come out with something that we can debate about. Um it's something that always got me intrigued. I said something about this on Monday, Tom, but um about Charlotte, she another little video that she mentioned about Ronda Rousey, how she's doing an MMA right now, and she wants to be something like 
Ronda Rousey, which which um, she wants to be a market per, uh, no female person like Ronda Rousey in in the WWE, and she maybe some people might think is impossible, but her goal is for her to actually main event WrestleMania or some kind of women match or or involve some kind of women match in the main event WrestleMania. Uh, Tom, do, do you do you uh, can you see a women's match main event WrestleMania not next year but any time in the future? Can you see that happening? Realistically, no. Um, even when Vince McMahon, because you know Vince McMahon is in his early seventies, even when he does pass, and you know obviously I think he's a big part of why you know women haven't been treated the way that they should have over the last couple of years because he doesn't see the value in women's wrestling as opposed to a guy like Triple H, which has turned NXT into a women's wrestling breeding ground. You know, obviously with the help of, uh, you know, the, the coaches and trainers down there like Sarah Del Rey. Um, but obviously Triple H had that plan that he wanted to get a girl like Sarah Del Rey, bring her in to help train these women into becoming that. But even still, to headline WrestleMania, that's tough. I think within the next couple of years, we're going to see a lot more women main eventing Raw. And I think maybe... Maybe main eventing another pay per view, but not WrestleMania. Yeah, you know, I, I don't want to say no, it will never happen, but if they could pull it off like Charlotte and, or Sasha could do it, I will give them props if that ever happened. But the only way I could see it happening, I mean, not, not, not the way it happens, but start it off. This is a good way to start it off because all these diva revelation thing or whatever is going on right now, it's, it's pretty cool. And then you have Zelda Ray train these the women, a future women of wrestling um, coming up. I mean, listening to Sasha's, um, po- I mean, I listened to Chris Jericho's podcast. It had Sasha Banks on there, and then when she got there at uh, first, the WWE they only put her in three minute matches. Like you know, they they figured like, okay, in the future we're gonna have you on the main roster and do a three minute match. That's all you're gonna do. And Sasha was like, uh, okay, okay, whatever. When um, Sarah came came down, I mean, she, she changed a lot of things. She she made the training um, more difficult than than it was, and she and she felt more challenged. And then and then she. She felt like okay with Sarah there. It it not only helped her a lot, but it helped out a lot of women in the wrestling. And she she feel confident that she'll help more women in and down the road. So, I mean, the only way I could see a women's match to ever main event WrestleMania, even with Vince dead or alive, if that woman is like like the biggest thing that they're talking about in, in in the world. Like, I remember one point, Stable, I feel like she was the biggest thing at one point because her and Playboy, her sex appeal and everything going on right now, there. And then, see, Stable was everywhere pretty much, you know. Um, I remember uh, my neighbor named her dog Sable due to the fact of, you know, the rest are Sable. And I was like, and she was not even a wrestling fan. She knows how old she was. She just liked the name Sable, and she was she she had, but at that time WWE uh, was going edgier, and she brought the sex appeal to it. And the believe, I mean, maybe you you might kill me for this, Tom, but and The Rock were not there at, at, during the Attitude Era. We might have saw a women's match at a main event WrestleMania. Think about it. Just imagine you take them out. Who's who be marketing big time in the WWE? I think you'll be stable. I don't think Triple H will get there. This is well, before Triple H. Oh, okay. Even if Rock and Austin weren't there, they would have found somebody. Uh, a, a women's match back then would have never made evented a WrestleMania. Women weren't even main eventing Raw. You know, the first 
I'm pretty sure that the first women's match, the main event Raw, didn't come until, what, like 2003, 2004? You know? Um, I know. Women, women in the Attitude Era, you know, I would say after 96, because there was a period, I'd say, from like 93 to like 95, 96, where there was a lot of good women's wrestlers. You know, you look at Alundra Blaze, and Bo Nakano was in there, and et cetera, and et cetera. Um, even though you had freaking birth of Faye, but that's a, that's a whole nother conundrum. But, um, yeah. women would have never made have entered WrestleMania back then, even if Rock and Austin weren't there. Absolutely not. Yeah. I'm not saying this main event match, like you put Sable against, um, uh, to- or Tori. Didn't say that. We know that match ain't going to be a fucking good match, but. Probably would have gave us a minute, but I, I think because of Sable with her name and her marketing could have helped out a lot. I mean, that that probably would have helped it. Because to me, if you think about the Attitude Era, when it comes to names, she's in the top. I'm for sure top ten for sure. Maybe even the top five when it comes to everybody that, that worked in the Attitude Era. Um, believe it or not, I think even Val Venus is in the top ten. All the crazy shit he did back then. See, I'm not talking about the and I I think because of China, people don't remember Sable as much anymore. When you when somebody says, "Give me a woman's name from the Attitude Era," the first name's going to be China. That's just it. That's just how it is because China, you know, on a, as big as Sable got, China got pretty big as well. Um, and you know, she posed for Playboy as well. So she was on the same level as Playboy, but she was she was wrestling in matches against men, which is unheard of. She won the Intercontinental Title, which is unheard which was unheard of for women to do in the WWE. It was unheard of. So I think that Sable wasn't the biggest women star in the Attitude Era. I think you have to look at China as far as that goes. And see, my whole thing is. Right now, right now, people are taking this whole Divas Revolution thing a little bit too far. They're acting like, listen, it, it's going to get to a better point, but we're taking baby steps right now. We're taking little tiny baby steps, you know, and a lot of fans are overreacting too. People are saying that Sasha Banks is the greatest women's wrestler ever already, and I'm sorry, but that is a complete and utter joke. I doubt it. Yeah, I doubt no it. No offense to Sasha Banks but she's still really young. And you know what? If people want to see great women's wrestling, I mean the best women's wrestling that they'll ever see, you go to the All Japan Women's Shows back in the 1990s, those were some of the best women's matches, and not even just women's, but best professional wrestling matches maybe ever. You know, girls like Manami Toyota and Aja Kong were putting on five-star matches night after night. Those are the legends of women's wrestling. Those are some of the best pure women's wrestlers. Those are women that define and revolutionize stuff. You know, that All Japan Women's, that that, that whole company back from the, I would say, 89 to probably 94, maybe 95, they were tearing it up night after night. And you read about the people that were, obviously, I never watched it when I when I was a kid because I was born in 93 but I've seen quite a bit of stuff from there and it is it's some of the best not just women's wrestling but wrestling of all time they really revolutionized what it is to be a women's wrestler so you know people people just need to kind of chill out with this you know take it day by day yeah, I'm not saying it's gonna. I'm not. I don't want to say it will happen, but if if it ever gonna happen, this is a good start. You can say. I mean, they're just putting the women out there. Like, look at they got total divas going out there. My fucking aunt no, now knows whose page is, and she doesn't even watch wrestling. She knows who the fuck is page is because total divas. Even just some girls I know that I've seen on Facebook that you know, I know for sure not wrestling fans, but they'll post something like, "Okay, now I'm watching total divas." Or, or girls be talking about like they know who's Alicia Fox is now because of the damn mm-hmm. show. But see, so but see, the, the the women because I I know a lot of women too that watch Total Divas. 
but they don't watch Raw. They just watch Total Divas because it's on E, and they love that reality TV sort of stuff. So, yeah, you get their names out there, but it's not translating into people watching your product. It's not translating into women having more interest into watching WWE. You know, it's just the whole reality TV aspect that a lot of women enjoy watching. It's not translating into bigger raw numbers as far as the women demographic goes. Yeah, definitely. And it was funny when you say Sasha is the best women wrestler. I mean, today I, it's kind of weird because. Um, oh, let me ask you a question. Do you know the? the are you familiar with the talent in, in Stardom? Um, some of them. I'm kind of like with Japanese women's wrestling. I'm like in and out of it. Like there'll be points where. I'll follow it closely with, and, then, and then kind of like fade out. Is it, are you familiar with uh, Starfire? Yeah, I've heard of her, yeah. Okay, do you think Sasha's better than her? No. No? No. Okay. no. You, they're, um, they're, they're, listen, like I said, no offense to Sasha Banks or Becky Lynch or any of the divas in WWE but I can probably name five or ten women on the independent scene that are better than them. Yeah. So, like I said, they're, but Tasha Banks is really, really good. She's really good. But And see, that's the thing, is that they're, right now I think we're at a point, not just in WWE, but on the independents, where there's so many great women's wrestlers. You know, you look at girls like Candice LeRae. You look at women like um, Cherry Bomb. You look at girls like Kimberly. You look at, you know, et cetera, et cetera. I could keep going. Veda Scott is getting, you know, better and better by the week. Um, I could keep going. I, I, I feel bad leaving anybody out. But I, I think anybody who follows the independence and closely knows who the top-tier women's wrestlers are. And they're, they're really, really, really good. They're really good. And they, like I said, they're there's 10 or 15 women out on the independent scene that deserve to be in WWE. Who knows who makes it? Who knows who doesn't? It's just a matter of what's going to happen. But like I said, there's, there's a lot of talented women's wrestlers out there and it's great to see. And it's great to see that so many women are getting out there. And you know, the women that we've had on the show and we've interviewed you, when we've talked about them and we've asked them, you know, who are your influences? What made you get into this? 99% of the time, they're like Lita and Trish. Lita and Trish inspired me to go out there and be a wrestler. You know, not to be a model or to go pose for Playboy or something like that, but to go out there and prove that I can wrestle as good as anybody else, as any guy or as any girl. So, like I said, it's it, it, it's great to see. I think women's wrestling is going to just keep getting bigger um, in the pro wrestling world, not just in WWE, but in the independents as well. And there's also some great uh, women wrestling over in the UK, you know. And we don't we don't hear a lot about them mm-hmm. from here, but we're starting to get more and more information because of the internet and Twitter and stuff like that. Yeah, definitely. And I just found out, I'm just realizing right now, I think it's the biggest thing got me more interested in women when I'm saying today than I have been in the past. I mean, yeah, I heard about the whole Trish and Lita thing, like people are like, I mean, like, what are you saying? We have past guests and they'll, they'll all because of Trish and Lita, I'm doing this today. I mean, even Sasha Banks said it on Jericho's podcast, saying the same thing, like, she said the same exact thing. It's, it's almost like saying we had Sasha Banks in our show, which she's never been in our show. <laughs> but I wish she had, but no. She, she probably would have said the same thing, Trish and Lita, Trish and Lita. But, um, yeah, we'll see. I mean, um, I'm not going to say, I'm not going to come out and say that will never happen, but who never knows? You know, I'm the same guy that said a few years ago that freaking Kevin Owens will never be in WWE, and look at him now, he's there, you know? He might be your fucking NXT champion again. He, he looks like he's going to make history. Two-time NXT champion. Has that ever happened in NXT? I doubt it. Nope. But, you know? No, I'm never not. happened. And uh, yeah. I, like I said, I think it's just it's just how things are changing. You know, 
never before have we seen so many guys from the independent scene coming into the WWE at one time. You know, it it, it started out with CM Punk, then it kind of went uh, to Brian Danielson, Daniel Bryan. Uh, you know, Nigel McGinnis was supposed to go into WWE, but a set of unfortunate circumstances stopped that. And I think he, you know, he would have been a huge star in WWE. And then it, it just kept rolling because you guys, you have guys like Dean Ambrose and Seth Rollins who were big indie stars now in WWE. And, you know, people said Samoa Joe would never be in WWE. He is there. Um, and like you said, Kevin Owens. So it's just a lot of things are changing. You know, women's wrestling, um, the way independent guys are going at it. And, I mean, look at the NXT tapings from tonight. Um, you know, Johnny Gargano and Tommaso Ciampa making an appearance and beating both NXT and Tyler Breeze. That's huge. Whether whether it was a dark match or whether it's going to be televised for TV. Either way, it's a big thing. Um and hopefully, hopefully both those guys get in because both those guys deserve it. Yeah, that's something we're going to talk about a little later. But, yeah, I mean, all these independent stars coming in, I'm like, it almost feels like it, it feels like this is pretty good because now you have younger guys. They just say a 15-year-old kid out there want to become a wrestler, and then they're looking at all this, I'm like, damn, maybe I should start going in the fucking training or look for a school because maybe that could be me eight years from now. You know, what if I go to, you know, Ring of Honor or, or Evolve a Dragon Gate and I, and I you know, d- accomplish goals from there or Japan, maybe I'll go to WWE in eight years from now, even though I don't know how to do a headlock right now. You know, that's something that's going to make more kids. You know what? There's a school down here at Santino's. I um, I just read that. They just announced, I think they just signed up 30 more students. 30 more students in that fucking school. I'm like, damn. And that's crazy. And they're just, they're just adding more students. And I don't know if, I don't want to say it's because of WWE. It's all because WWE signing up independent guys. But... You never know. It seems like there is a bright future in wrestling while while they keep doing all these signings. And not only that, you know, this helps the independents getting more talent and and possibly other other shows like, you know, you know local shows getting, you know, more attendance. I'm going to tell you this right now. Um, this is a company called UEW here in California. I, they just moved to a bigger venue, and they're getting more – People coming to their shows. I, I've been to their shows a couple of times, but I haven't been there recently. And they, I, I, I haven't been to their new venue, but I heard it's bigger and they're getting more, um, more attendance in in their fucking venue. They're even their new big venue, you know, and they're gonna continue on, keep going there, and and maybe I'll make. Now it's kind of makes me want to go. Check out their show again. You know, UEW is like um one of those hardcore shows. You know, like you know, weapons use, ECW type thing. That's what it is. And you know, that that's they're to me right now they're starting to become the second biggest promotion in California. I mean, no, I know right now PWG is the number one, but number two could be UEW due to the fact now it's growing bigger and bigger. They even brought Chris Dickerson one time. You know. So that's that's pretty good for them. I, I, I put my hands on that, my hands on to these, those guys. But um, if anybody's listening, maybe you should check out their stuff. If you're into like hardcore wrestling, um, Bob Wire youth and all that stuff, you should guys check it out if you guys are into that. All right, all right. Let's see another thing. Um, I want to see a discussion about um, um, the Ring of Honor. All right. I remember a couple of times we all need you, Matt, and Skid talking about the whole Roderick Strong thing about um, <clears throat> signing talent to exclusive deals and all that stuff. But can we see, do you think in five years from now, anybody that joins the Ring of Honor a roster will get an exclusive talent? I mean, anybody. 
I don't know. Um, because you you look at the guys in the Ring of Honor now, and you look at the big names. Um, because any of those guys could get a shot at WWE at any time. You know, um, Adam Cole, I think, is going to be in WWE. Uh, it's just when he's going to be in WWE. It's not if. Um, Jay Lethal could be in WWE as well. Um, guys like ACH, Cedric Alexander, all the names that are becoming big, Moose, you know, all these guys are becoming big names could very easily wind up in WWE within the next five years, without a doubt. Um, you know, guys like the Briscoes have gotten, you know, their their looks from WWE, but nothing ever came from it. It's just, it, it, it's, it's going to depend on circumstances and what's going to happen. And, you know, when we were talking about this, you know, me, me and Matt Grant from, you know, Weekly Wrestling Podcast said the exact same thing. What Ring of Honor is doing right now is not going to benefit them for the future because they're making guys go through their Ring of Honor dojo, their tryout camp, who don't need it. You know, guys who have been on the independent scene for years and years. When you put somebody in the tryout camp or your dojo, whatever, it should be for brand new guys, guys who have been in the business for less than a year or two, you know, maybe two years. Not guys who have been wrestling on the indie scene for more than, you know, three or four years. That's a, that's a little ridiculous. But that's what Ring of Honor is doing. And I think soon enough they need to kind of change that because, you know, at, at any time they could lose star power, even with all these exclusive deals. Because once those deals run out, you know, once Adam Cole's, you know, exclusive deal runs out, he could very easily go to WWE without even a second thought. He could just say, but by Ring of Honor, I'm going, and there's a big star loss, you know? So it's just, it, like I said, Ring of Honor needs to start building up a lot of talent. They need to start bringing in a lot of indie talent. And you don't even have to sign a lot of them to exclusive contracts. You just need to start building up that roster so you have enough so when you lose big names, you can easily replace it. Yeah, I mean, I just feel right now Ring of Honor is doing things that, you know, they're doing, I mean, it just feel like came out of nowhere that all of a sudden now Adam Cole, Kyle O'Reilly, Bobby Fish, they can't do PWG shows anymore. Like, at one point, I feel like going to PWG is like the only chance to see guys like Adam Cole, Tomasa John, where was the Ring of Honor roster at the time? Um, you see him in PWG, you know, but the thing is, we get a hope for guys to see like Matt Taven or Michael Bennett get in, and maybe you'll see them too. But now it's starting to become a uh, another, almost like another WWE. You sign, you can you, you, you're you're signed with them until your contract runs out. You can't do anything else, you know. And are they making more money than they are making now? Probably. And um. Now they're coming to Vegas more often now. Rumor has it they're going to have the 14th anniversary back in Vegas. So if that's, if that's true, then I'm planning to go. And and, and I don't know how much how much with the attendees in the last Las Vegas show, the one I didn't go to. But it, it looked like it did pretty well as well. So they're making people come to their shows no matter what they go. That just shows me if they ever come to do a show in L.A., it'll do good. Attended wise, um, so it seems like every year they're doing something different. It wouldn't surprise me in a year or two they start coming here or San Diego, San Francisco, or, or any week. went to San Francisco for the rest of the week. But I mean, start doing random ass shows here, there, and in other cities like fucking Seattle or fucking um, Portland. You know, they start doing shows there, and I'm all like, they're, they're, they're expanding more, and that means you have to sign more their talent exclusively due to the fact that that talent could be working an independent show, like you say, in Florida, but they might need them to come to their show they want to do in Portland. So, yeah, it seems like they're making more money, more money than they ever did before, 
but let's just see how they could do, you know, get more expanded. Um, if it takes you like not, not even one time to go to PWG, oh well. You know, I still think PWG would do great even without any Ring of Honor talent. I feel like they showed it to them like, hey, if you can if you can sign all these exclusive deals, go for it. We could do it. We could still put out a good show. We could still do, do well attendance without without them. I feel like they could do it. So, um, yeah, possibly if 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 a wrestler that can't get in WWE, maybe another mo- a place they could go is Ring of Honor. I'm not saying Ring of Honor is going to be a WWE type promotion in um in a year from now or soon or you know what I'm saying I don't think it's going to ever be that. I'm not saying they're going to be WCW. I don't think there will be, but. We'll see what happens, and um, yeah, we'll see what happens. All right, um, I'm gonna take just a commercial break. I just um, not out of the base we can talk about, but um, when we come back, maybe me and Tom will talk about something else that happened, which Tom just mentioned that the uh, NXT taping will be right back. What's up? This is the phenomenal AJ Styles down here in uh, LA, kicking it with the uh, PWG, busting my tail. Freaking great tournament, the bowl tournament is freaking amazing. Anyway, the fact of the matter is, everybody and anybody needs to listen to Wrestling Head Podcast. This is Josh Alexander and Ethan Page. We are the Monster Mafia, and you're listening to Wrestling Heads Radio. Hello, friends. This is Matt Seidel. You are using your brain and listening to Wrestling Head. Respect. Yes! 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 Yes, yes, yes. We are back. Um, I know so we have a call in the on hold for a while. Let's put him on there. 651 Area Code. You're live on Wrestling Heads Radio. Who's speaking? Hey, what's going on? This is Nathan from Eyes on the Ring. Oh, what's going on, Nathan? How you doing, bro? Good. I uh, just thought I'd call in. I I uh, was hearing what you guys had to say about NXT, and I figured I got home, so I figured I might as well just join the conversation and talk about some wrestling. All right, let me ask you something before I, um, I was going to ask Tom something, but let me ask you something. We had a little debate about, you know, is it good for the sport of uh, professional wrestling where it's which, let's just say you're simply trying to plan this guy to be your next champion, but you're having the tapings two weeks before the event, and then you're you're pretty much putting a spoiler out there and saying, okay, this guy's going to be a champion. And pretty much we're telling you next week it's going gonna, it's gonna to happen. Do you think that's good for this? It doesn't matter if you're WWE, TNA, no matter what you are. you think that's good? Um... Yes and no. I mean, it's it's always weird when promotions will leak out their own information because it could be seen as a spoiler. But I know, like, the reason why they do it is so they can get eyes on the product, say, hey, so-and-so won this title, watch this show, you know what I mean? So it's, I think it's more of a way for them just to um, get people to watch it versus – they don't care about that they're spoiling a specific result. They just want people to have eyes on the product. And I think that's their mm-hmm. main goal. Interesting. All even right. even well, if it does sacrifice some of the, the integrity of the wrestling business, because to me it does. Yeah. But like I said, uh, like what I said to Tom earlier, I'm hoping... This is like a, something like an angle, like okay, Kevin Steen stole the title from Finn Balor now. Because I was hoping Balor gets another, run, I mean, a longer run. But if Owens does win, I mean, it's a little, it's a little upsetting. But uh, yeah, we'll see what happens. All right, um, Tom, you did mention earlier Tommaso Ciampa and Johnny Gargano. They uh, wrestled a match tonight, but the way it looks like, Tom, is this is not a dark match going to be um, part of an episode um, of, um, an, of an NXT. So they actually used their names, Tommaso Ciampa and Johnny Gargano. The way it looks like when I read, it looks like 
Tyler Breeze and Bill Dempsey are working on an angle together, and they lost the match to Tommaso Ciampa and um, Gargano. But the way it looks like, they bring them almost like jobbers, but they, they but they lose to them. And I don't know. It looks like it's possible we'll see Tyler Breeze and Bull Dempsey feud. I'm guessing, or this might lead to it. But um, thoughts? Are, what are your thoughts of Tommaso Ciampa and Gargano um, um, showing up in NXT? Yeah, and you know it's funny because earlier we were talking about. Uh, some of the other NXT stuff that was happening at the tapings tonight and Kevin Owens coming out with the title. Apparently I'm reading now that like a lot of a lot of the second set of tapings which had Owens come out with the title and apparently Sasha Banks came out with the title. Apparently they don't know if that's going to be for TV because they said it had like a lot of weird stuff. It felt like a show just for the full sale crowd but just just trying to throw that out there. But, I mean, this is Gargano's, I think, second appearance in NXT. He worked a, a, a dark match before, and now he's he's doing another match. So, regardless if it is on TV or not, it's still it, it's, it's great for Gargano and Ciampa because, these, like I said, these guys are getting very, very heavily looked at. You know, they're getting match after match. Um, and I... After this, I would have to suspect that either both Gargano and Ciampa get signed or maybe just Gargano. I hope for both of them because both of them are extremely talented. And you also have two completely different talents in Tommaso Ciampa and Johnny Gargano. You know, Ciampa could easily be a top heel in NXT and then eventually in the main roster. Um, He's kind of, like I said, he's got more of the ruthless side to him, the of course, the Sicilian psychopath, it's, they could do some sort of gimmick like that for him. Don't have to change him too much. Um, and then Gargano's kind of just like, he, he's like kind of like a natural baby face, but he be a heel as well. But I feel like either way, it could work. And both these guys are just so great in the ring. And um, like I said, both these guys deserve it. And it could be... The, the only negative about this is it's going to be a huge loss for uh, for independent wrestling. You know, these are two top guys within independent wrestling. These are two guys that have been working for years and years on their craft. But, you know, like we always say, we want these guys who have the talent and the skill and have been busting their ass for years traveling around the indie scene to, to make as much money as possible. So that's what I'm hoping for. But uh, but either way, these guys are getting uh, a lot of a uh, lot of attention, and you know what this does as well. This also draws a lot of people toward independent wrestling. You know, the Evolve shows this weekend. Gargano is going to be on both of them, and that's maybe going to intrigue people to check out these shows and be like, "Man, I wonder why are people talking about this Johnny Gargano guy? You know, what's going on with Twitter? Maybe I should check check this guy out." And they order. Uh, you know the, the you know the evolve shows from this weekend. They're like, man, this guy's pretty good. I should definitely keep an eye on this guy, and it just leads to people talking. And like I said, especially nowadays with social media and people constantly being on their phones and constantly being online, word of mouth is one of the most important things that any wrestling promotion or any company can have because all it takes is for one person to see something and they tell a friend, and then they tell a friend, and then they show a group of people, and they tell a friend, and it spreads like wildfire. You know, that's how a lot of YouTube videos get popular is because one person sees it, and then they keep telling each other until it blows up. So, you know, this is great either way. It's great to see a lot of these independent guys getting shots, and, you know, can't can't wait to see what happens. Uh, I definitely, people were saying that, I, you know, this is just speculation and rumor that Candace was supposed to be there, but because Johnny Gargano runs the AIW wrestling school over in Ohio, um, because he wasn't there, Candace had to uh, had to run the school for the night, so that's why she couldn't make it because they couldn't find like another replacement for the night. So, like I said, but that's just a rumor. 
that she's being looked at by WWE as well. Yeah, it's definitely. I didn't hear, I didn't hear that rumor about Candice, but um, that'd be interesting to see her in, in WWE if she does show up. I mean, that'd be cool. I mean, she's been in the independent scenes for so long, and who knows? Maybe we'll, we'll check her. And, and I'm, I'll tell you this right now. R- Lil and Rio was really checking out her skills when I saw her, um, like, really paying attention to her in the ring while while he was scouting. So, who knows? <laughs> um Nate, do you want to give all your thoughts of Gargano and Tommaso Ciampa appearing on um, on NXT? Um, I hope it leads to bigger and better things for these guys within the wrestling business because both guys deserve it. Um, I'll openly admit I do follow Gargano, but not as much as I follow Ciampa. Um, so I'm more, I guess you could say, biased towards Ciampa than I am Garga- Gargano in a sense that like when I first saw him in Ring of Honor, I was really liking what I saw. I mean, the first match he had, I was like, this guy isn't anything special. But the more and more I saw him, I'm like, this guy's great. And then, like, when we were at the 13th anniversary in Las Vegas back in March, I still didn't under like, I still couldn't figure out why. Maestro Champa didn't win the world title in that four-way because, in my opinion, he should have. I understand why he didn't now because of who is the world champion now, but it just seemed like a missed opportunity. And then he didn't resign his contract with Ring of Honor, and then he went to AAW and stuff like that, so I wasn't able to see him. So this will put him on my TV again, and that is what I'm – most looking forward to and being able to follow him in NXT now. And hopefully he gets to the main roster and hopefully his time in NXT is a lot better than his time in OVW um, during his 2004, 2005 run. Because I've heard, like, if you listen to his podcast with Colt Cabana from a while back, he talks about it at great length and he hated the way OVW was ran, and he just... So I hope NXT turns out to be a better uh, opportunity for him. That that was the developmental system that Cornette ran, right? Was OVW? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, probably not surprising. He's probably like, hey, listen, what you got to do is you got to be an old school heel. I want you doing any of that flippy shit. Like the Young Bucks, uh, Young Bucks, they suck. I fucking hate Jim Cornette. But anyway. Well, he's uh, right about the Young Bucks. No, he is not. (laughs) Do you, wait, wait, wait. Because it is Debate Thursday, you believe that Jim Cornette is right about the Young Bucks? I do. That you think that they're exposing? Because, all right, so I listened to a clip on YouTube, for anyone who didn't know, um, at the IWL show that Oscar was at last weekend. The, the oh, young there. buck kicked an uh, an eight year old kid or like a nine year old kid, and so right, on Jim's yeah. podcast, he uh, it was like on MLW Radio. He said that because they super kicked a little kid, they're exposing the business. No, that is ridiculous. And Nathan, I'll let you rebuttal after me. Listen, Jim Cornette is a guy that is stuck in the 1980s. His philosophy that I agree with. Like, yeah, he is stuck in the 1980s. He does not want to change. He does not want to admit that times are changing and what people see as entertainment and wrestling is changing. Like I said, and, you know, he was talking about the IWL show. He's like, yeah, you know, the Young Bucks, they're still wrestling in front of these little crowds. And to, uh, I'm thinking to myself, wait a minute, these guys are going to Japan to wrestle in the final D1 Climax show in front of, God knows how many people, you know, because the finals of the G1 are going to be, is going to be the biggest show. It's going to have the most people because they're not going to be drawing, you know, these smaller houses, which is still, you know, five to 10,000 people, which isn't that, uh, that's a lot of people. Jim Cornette just has an agenda against guys like the Young Bucks, like Kevin Owens, like Colt Cabana, who don't agree with his bullshit philosophy. Yeah, I mean, he 
he claimed that Owens was one time, one point lazy, like he didn't want to do shit during his time in Ring of Honor, like getting himself in better shape and all that. He was claiming that he was gaining weight, and he never thought of being WWE. Now that he's in there, he doesn't say that much negative things about him because he knew he was wrong. He knows, you know. He, I bet you, when he was time in Ring of Honor, he probably was like, "This guy will never be in WWE." Trust and my me, guess you know? is Tim Cornette. But- Probably wanting him to do something really stupid, and Kevin Owens or Kevin Steen didn't want to do it, and therefore that's why Jim Cornette doesn't like him because he said no to whatever it was that Jim Cornette, whatever idea it was that Jim Cornette had for him at the time. Because yeah, I guarantee and you, you, you hear from Kevin Owens that um, during that whole El Generico Kevin Steen feud back in Ring of Honor. And you know they got Colt Cabana in there and Steve Carino as well. That was that was the big one of the biggest feuds in Ring of Honor. And Jim Cornette hated it, even though the fans loved it. Jim Cornette hated it, and the only reason he went along with it is because all the Ring of Honor fans loved it and drew people to watch these Ring of Honor shows because it was a great feud. The Kevin Steen El Generico feud was great. I don't care how many stupid bumps they took. You know, obviously it was dangerous. You know, the unprotected chair shots. I look back and I do cringe a little bit because not the smartest thing, but it was, you know, they, they had a plan. They had a plan of what they were doing and what they wanted to accomplish. Um, but Nathan, I, I wanted to hear from you. Why do you agree with Cornette about his opinion about the young bucks? Um, I, okay. I've seen countless young bucks matches and I will agree that they are very over. But they are relying on a gimmick that is not original at all. I've never been a fan of the Bullet Club. I think it's a ripoff of the NWO. Well, we know that. It's a combination of the NWO DX. And it's, I think it's just play out and stupid. Um, the Young Bucks, they have good matches. But usually when I um, when I enjoy one of their matches, it's because of the team that they're facing. And my biggest pet peeve about the Young Bucks is the fact that they have buried the super kick to the point where it means absolutely nothing. And I understand, like, Skits tried to tell me it's part of their gimmick, it's part of their gimmick, but it's like, okay, I understand it's part of your gimmick, but you do it way too much. And it's just they hi, hi. don't appear at all. Well, I was going to say, speaking about Skits, He's on right now. What's going on? They don't do it. Well, hold on, hold on. They don't do it that much. Come on. They don't do it that much. Like, they do super kicks, but I don't think they do it. Like, super kick, super kick, super kick, super kick. Like, they do their super kick spots when they, you know, have a good spot. You know, like, if you go watch the PWG uh, Tremendous uh, preview, remember when uh, Super Dragon basically had Candice LeRae and the curb stuff, like, position, and they super kicked her in the face. You know, that's a that's a spot, basically. Um, you know, they got their move that they, uh, you know, the, the uh, corner move that they have. Uh, they have a, like, I just don't understand, like, why you had on the book so much. Like, they have their moves besides just super kicks. Like, I don't They just like, don't appeal to me at all. As a wrestling fan, they just I watch them and it was like they're not the young bucks. Is, the young bucks is clearly the fucking best tag team in the fucking world, hands down. No, nope. um, not with not in a world where Red Dragon exists. I'm sorry, Red Dragon right now is not the best tag team in the world. Not this year. Maybe last year we could talk that. This year we can't debate and put Red Dragon there. There's no other tag team that's touching them this year. If you give me another tag team right now that's actually touching them, then we can debate that right now. Because Red Dragon's not that team right now. Because if you look at the storylines on, on uh, Ring of Honor, you see Bobby Fish is about to uh, be in the uh, TV uh, title scene. So, And Kyle Riley's doing his own shit, you know. IWGP title, he got that shot. And I'm pretty sure he's about to do some singles matches too. So these guys are basically going in the singles competition. So... So, what's the other tag team you can say that's near the Bucks right now in in professional wrestling? If you, I mean, if if you, you want to throw, take, if you take Red Dragon out of the equation, then I can't name name one. 
But I mean, I was going to say gonna this. To my guns. I'm just going to say they don't. As a wrestling fan, nothing they do appeals to what I like about wrestling. I know this because is there's not. No, there's no psychology and substance to what they do. I know this tag team about the name is like probably not one of the best tag teams in the world, but they're over too. New Day. I don't know if you want to throw them in there. That's like the next back. Uh, I'll say they're the next best tag team right now going in professional wrestling. If you want to compare them to the Bucks, there's really nobody you can compare the Bucks. Honestly, that, that's just my opinion. I don't know where Oscar and Tom think, but right now Red Dragon, you can't even name them in I, that subject right now. I think as far as entertaining tag teams go, I think Rapongi Vice is getting up there as one of the top tag teams, just because they're so entertaining and they work so well together. I mean, Rocky and Trent, they're they're both very good promo guys, uh, maybe Rocky more than Trent. But, you know, you have to think that, like, after losing Alex Coswell, because the Forever Hooligans were stale as hell, um, it feels so fresh, and it definitely adds a lot to Ring of Honor and New Japan. So I would put RPG Vice up there as, like, some of the best. I could put RPG Vice up there, because they always have great matches with the Bucks. You know, I mean, I'm tripping on what uh, Nate is talking about, though. Like, yeah, I mean, it's it's, really, it's different opinions, and I like that. I like that some people don't like the Bucks and they don't like their style, and you know that's that that's fine with me. What what? And you know, because Nathan's respectful about it. He's not like he's not like Jim Cornette who you know, bashes the Bucks and calls them you know like pieces of shit, and they're gonna amount to nothing. You know, Nathan's not saying that. Nathan's very respectful. He's just like, you know, I, I see what the Bucks are doing, but I just don't like it. See, I like well, that. Well, in that same vein, it's like I'm not like I guess I'm not gonna shit on you for liking the Bucks. If you want to like the Bucks, I'm not shitting on you. Bucks. Yeah, see, no, I, 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 I know that, but I'm just saying I'm just defending my point about being respectable about it. I don't like the Bucks, but I will say that anybody that does like the Bucks, more power to them. And and one of the things is, uh, I don't think Nathan can even deny, and Nathan, you can uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but what the Young Bucks are doing, whether you like them or not, they're making the tag team scene on the independents in New Japan and Ring of Honor. They've been making it a lot more interesting and a lot bigger within the last couple of years. Yeah, and I can't deny that. Like, everybody wants to, like... I was going to say, like, like, everybody wants to take their spot, their number one spot. Yeah, and like right. I said, we've, I, I think we've seen kind of a, a resurgence in tag team wrestling and uh, in a bunch of different promotions because of the Young Bucks. So, it's just, see, like I said, I like this because it's a respectful debate. It's not people shitting on each other. And like I said, and that's why I, I, I don't like what Jim Cornette was saying about the Young Bucks. Like I said, well, you know what, Tom? I'm going to tell you like this. If you look at the Kevin Steen, Young Bucks, Shoots, he's been hating on them since ROH days. Like, he even hates Steve Carino. That's another person you figure out the name that uh, uh, Jim Cornette hates. He hates everybody. He hates his fucking stuff. Like, <laughs> he hates everybody, literally. Like, he probably hates us for talking about him. You know? <laughs> He hates but, Vince Russo, Ferraro with a pack. Yeah, he hates everybody. He, he hates Vince, um, probably. Yeah. He, he, you know, and I, I, I will say with Jim Cornette, I do agree on some of the stuff that he said. Like, I've seen a couple of his, of his shoot interviews, and some of the stuff he says that I can agree on, but there's a lot of stuff I don't agree on with him. Um, you know, like, a lot of the Vince Russo stuff, um, I do agree on on what he says about Vince Russo and Ed Ferrara and all that because those guys were fucking morons. But um, I don't know. Like I said, it's and then and then you see Jim Cornette. He's like, uh, you know, I don't I don't want to talk about the Young Bucks, but I'm going to talk about them anyway. And hey. that's why that's why I don't listen to Jim Cornette's show. Also because of that uh, that other chick on there who's just uh, almost insulting. Hey, speaking of the Bucks, did you guys see that couple get married and they did the two-sweet? 
No. Did they? <laughs> they did. Too sweet before they uh, kiss. That's, 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 my, that's, my, that's, 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 that's my kind of wedding right there. That's ridiculous. <laughs> that's hey, uh, real but quick, they, be, before I leave, you know, guys, because uh, I'm about to leave, um, I wish I could stay on longer, but anyways, folks, you guys know where to follow me at WH Skits. And, uh, guys, hold it down. Peace. All right, peace, man. All right, that was Skits. I wish I can uh, give us the uh, for the uh, – Kevin Owens thing that's going on right now, all the NXT uh, spoilers out there, but um, yeah, he had he had to leave, and I forgot to tell him what, what's going on with the fucking Dodgers. But they're just big time to the Reds, nine and three. I don't know why, but oh well. All right, that was interesting. Um, yeah, that was freaking interesting about the Young Bucks. Um, I mean, going back to Cornette, the guy is freaking. I don't know. He should stay away from the world of professional wrestling. I can say and. See, I'm going to tell you this right now. I was at that IWL show, and I, when I saw the Young Bucks kid, I was like, holy shit. I, I, I wish I recorded the whole thing because I, I, I wasn't sure what this all was leading to. And then they super kicked the kid. I was like, holy shit. <laughs> I was like, fuck. Imagine I had it on video before everybody else posted it on Twitter. Like, I'm like the first one there. That would have been sweet. But I just don't know what the whole kicking the kid thing or something not the kid, the father, and to the kid, thing. I, like, I didn't even know where it was going to, but then when, they, when I was looking at the kid laying on the floor, like, I got to take a picture of this shit. I am. And then uh, Matt Jackson retweeted it, and it went all over. So, yeah. <laughs> that, was freaking, that was freaking amazing. That was a, that was a cool ass show. And um, and um, if anybody in the California area, the IWL's next show is going to be on uh, October the 3rd in Baldwin Park, California. Uh, it just been announced that Paul London will be at the show. So you guys got to check it out if you guys want to go to that show. So I just put the date out there, October 3rd in Baldwin Park, California. All right. Um, I, I kind of want to, when you guys mentioned uh, Evolve earlier today, I kind of want to go to the card for a bit. Um just in case y'all did not know, Kevin is this Saturday um, and going taking place in Queens, New York. Um, it's going to be going on at 6 p.m. Eastern time. Um, if you're in, a, in the New York area, if you guys want to check out that show, it's going to take place in uh, 5615 Northern Boulevard in Woodside, Queens, New York. Uh, Tom, are you going to the show? I... I'm trying to go to this one. I was supposed to go to Evolve 48 in Long Island, uh, but my I don't even want to rant on this. My stupid fucking work. I told them I was like, I was like, listen, the 16th, I'm not supposed to work. Okay? They're like, yeah, that's fine. 16th, you have off. I look on my schedule today, and I'm working on Sunday. I'm like, I'm gonna fucking kill you guys. I'm seriously gonna stab you in the face, Abdul the Butcher style, a fork. Um, mm-hmm. it, but either way, if I can or can't make it, I'm ordering these shows because these cards look great. And Evolve has been doing great stuff in 2015. So, um, I recommend anybody, if you're, if you're not going to the shows, you've got to order them because they're going to be definitely worth your money. And there's never any problems because I know people have some, you know, concerns when ordering iPay-per-views or stuff like that. There's rarely any problems with, any of the WWN live events? Well, most people that have pro- say they have problems with eye pay per views, it's basically because of the sour taste that Ring of Honor has left in their mouths. Because let's face it, they their eye pay per view feeds for the longest time were terrible, and I don't, I never understood how Evolve and Shakara and everybody else figured it out, and Ring of Honor never could. So, and I mean they. Well, yeah, and it was and it was because like during those periods when Ring of Honor was having all the eye pay per view troubles, they were with Go Fight Live, and Go Fight Live was just like shit. You know, uh, I remember on, I forget whose shoot interview it was, but they they would talk about how Go Fight Live was just like so sloppy, and they would forget to bring like microphones and extra cameras and like. Ring of Honor had a rush to get like some extras from like high spots and stuff like that. So, but I, I think Ring of Honor's figured it out now because I can't remember. It's definitely been a couple of years since they've had a uh, 
definitely a bad eye pay per view. And like I said, all their pay per views that they that they've done has been um, good quality as well. I haven't seen any technical issues on their part from pay per view or eye pay per views as well in a while. Yeah, definitely. Um, but let's let's uh, get with the card for quick break. Hold on, let me go get it out for a sec. Um, the premier athlete brand. Um, was that? I think I'm hearing things. I thought someone said uh said something. But uh, the premier athlete brand they're doing an open challenge. Anthony Heath and uh and Caleb Conley are just doing an open challenge. Do you guys see a special tag team coming out of nowhere? Um, to answer this challenge, like maybe a Young Bucks or the Bravados we haven't seen in a while. Um. What do you guys think? Who do you think is going to come up with open challenge? I mean, it's tough. it's tough to say. If I had to guess, I think it might be maybe two people that we're not familiar with, really. Um, because I think either way, the premier, yeah, the premier athlete brand go over in this match. But it's just going to be maybe an evolved debut for some people. Uh, it's not going to be the Bucks because they're in Japan right now. But um, I don't know. It's it, that's it's going to make it interesting, and it makes it uh, interesting to see if somebody can debut, if a tag team debuts, or if it's just two people teaming up together. I think yeah, it would also have to be two guys that have experience because why would you bring in two guys and have them team together and then like when they don't have any experience because they are hyping a team as a mystery team, correct? Sometimes it's it's an open challenge pretty much any team. Okay. Well, because if it's an open challenge, then it could go either way, but I would rather it be an actual team because then you're guaranteed a good match out of, out of it, depending which team they get. You know what I mean? Where versus if it's just two random guys that they decide to put together, which I, in r- tag team wrestling, nothing makes me mad more than two guys just thrown together for the sake of doing it. See, we'll figure out what this team Hopefully we'll find out we'll find out this weekend who's this tag team is gonna be. But uh let's let's get with this one match. Um Biff Busick against Tracy Williams. Um I'm not familiar with Tracy Williams at all. Um maybe you guys can help me out here, but uh I'm not gonna give any predictions, but I, I don't know what to say if this is gonna be a great match or not, but uh I don't know if any any of you guys are familiar with Tracy Williams, but uh yeah, I don't I don't know. Tom are you guys familiar with them, or? Yeah, I've seen a couple of Tracy Williams stuff. Uh, going, he goes by Hot Sauce. Tracy Williams, uh, he does some stuff in uh, AIW. Uh, that's where I've seen some of his stuff, and he's kind of getting a lot more steam in uh, in the in Evolve as well. Uh, he's he's a very good talent. I think he'll mesh really well with the music. So. Uh, I'm looking forward to this, and Tracy Williams is definitely uh, he's definitely somebody to look out for. Um, he's definitely getting better and better uh, each and every time, and he's going to be definitely um, a name to to look out for. You know, he's he does some stuff and beyond as well, so he's getting his name out there. Um, so I, I think it's going to be good, and it's going to be good exposure for the people that have maybe never seen him before. If you haven't, like I said, he does stuff in AIW, Beyond Wrestling. Um, and like I said, he's, he's definitely a talent that's going to be making an impact within the next couple of years in uh, in the independent scene. And, of course, the music is the music, and he's probably going to uppercut his head off, but uh, it should be good. Yeah, all right. Well, let's just see uh, what happened. Uh, Nathan, are you familiar with his work? Um, I'm f- familiar with Biff Busick more than I am with his opponent. I haven't heard of his, too much of his opponent. So based on what I know, I would have to – if you're 
asking me to predict, I would probably say that this Biff Music is going to win. But like I said, I haven't heard of this the guy that he's wrestling until now. So, all right, all right. Well, we'll see what happens. All right, um, Trent Beretta will be going against Ray Hornets. I mean, I've been looking up Ray Hornets a lot. He's not that bad. I mean, I first heard about him during the, the King of Indies uh, thing they had in WrestleMania week, uh, which I didn't go to none of the shows. And then um, I've been watching stuff on YouTube, and he's getting booked around here in Los Angeles, a couple of Lucha shows out here. Um, he, he's not bad. He's pretty good. I, I like Hornet. And then uh, he's going against Trent Brittle. No, Trent could to put out he could do work in the ring. We all know he can he, he's gonna um show up and put up the match. But I think this match is gonna be pretty good. I don't know what you guys think, but I think this match is gonna be really good. Yeah, I think it I think it should be good as well. Um you know, Trent being back in the vault is definitely is definitely good and Ray Horse is another guy who's getting better each and every time. I've only seen him a couple times in Evolve, but uh, definitely shows a lot of promise and uh, looks to be another another great high flying addition to the independent scene. Um, let's just see how how this goes. Um, like I said, I, I I've seen people talk about Ray Horace and um, the potential he has. So I think this is going to be a good test for him and against a guy like Trent. Yeah, we'll see what Ray can do. Um, I've seen a handful of his matches, so I'm not too familiar with them. But I think anytime you put a guy against Trent Beretta, they'll have a good match. Because Trent Beretta, from what I've seen of him on the indie scene, has been really good. Don't understand why WWE decided to let him go. Why didn't they let him go? Because they had nothing for him. And they didn't realize what they had. So, I mean... Yeah, and look where he is now. He's awesome. Yeah. You know, you know what? At the same time, you know, when, when he was at PWG, uh, his first show, the crowd booed the shit out of him. Like, he's a fucking... Don't they always do somebody but, who comes in from WWE, though? Or like a former WWE know. guy? I don't okay. know, like, uh, I don't think so. Like, I, I could see, you know, let's just say they bring in TJ Black. I could see the crowd cheering from. I could see that. Yeah. You know? They just probably, people saw Trent, like, he's just another, I'm trying to think of a name that no one gives a shit about on the current roster, Um, that if they get released, who gives a fuck about him? Um, Zack Ryder? Well, I don't want to put his name out there because he, at one point he was doing good. Maybe Adam Rose. Like, if they release him today, then anybody will give a shit? No. But if he comes to a PWG ring, they will fool the shit out of him. I mean, not only that, I remember I saw him at a uh, championship wrestling from Hollywood taping. They booed him, too. You know, they just they just looked at him as a fucking – as a former WWE jobber. But then when he show up his ring skills, they they somehow it just turned around. They just show respect to this guy. And uh, look at him now; he's getting booked everywhere in Ring of Honor, New Japan, Evolve, he's going everywhere now. So he's doing well in the Indies, we can see. All right, uh, next match: Chris Hero going against Mike Bailey. You know what? I think I saw this match at PWG before. I want to say. Yeah, you know what? It, it did. Yeah, last last show, and he beat Chris Hero, and that was a pretty good show. Um, good match, actually. And yeah, he. This is the rematch from PWG, which it was a pretty good match. Um, I'm I'm sure you guys saw clips on the freaking um, DVD preview, but uh, yeah, I hope it, it pulls off like that match that he did in PWG, and then if they do, you you guys are looking for looking forward to a good match. So I don't know if you guys any got any thoughts on this match. Yeah, should be. But I know that's gonna be really good. Yeah, just just like Nathan said, it should be great. Mike Bailey having a, a breakout 2015, and Chris Hero having. Uh, I, I, 
I don't want to say this is the best year that Chris Hero has had, but he is having a hell of a year. The matches he's been having with Zach Saber Jr., uh, Biff Cusick, Timothy Thatcher, everybody. I mean, it, it seems like in 2015, Chris Hero is doing no wrong as far as in-ring work. And not to mention, the guy wrestled three hours up in Smash Wrestling. Like, who the fuck does that? I probably couldn't wrestle for, like, 15 minutes and yet Chris Hero can go out there for two to three hours and wrestle. Like, it, it, it's crazy what this guy is doing. So it should be great. Um, I, I like the different meshes of styles. I can't wait to see their PWG match as well as this match as well. Probably going to get, uh, you know, different types of matches, but it's going to be good either way. Yeah, Chris Hero is another guy that WWE dropped the ball on, and I'd like to know more of what happened there. But I'm not going to get into that. But WWE's loss is the indie scene's gain, like we've seen with Chris Hero, because he's great when he's motivated. And from what I've seen of him since he's been back on the indie scene, he has been really good. Yeah, definitely. Um, we'll see what happens. Uh, I mean, if it's going to be a freaking, like I said, if it's going to be a freaking match like I saw in PWG, then you guys are going to enjoy this match. All right, uh, the next match is a single rem- singles rematch from last Queen's event. It's going to be Rich Swan against Drew Gulak. Um, I don't know if you guys, you guys saw the first match, but this one's going to be pretty good. Um I don't know what your thoughts of this uh, rematch in Cambridge One and uh, Drew Gulak. It should be it should be good. Like I said, it's another match where it's a high flyer going against a technical guy, just like Chris Hero and Mike Bailey. Um, I, I've seen their I, I saw the previous match and it was really good. Um, you know, Gulak is a guy that can kind of go in there and kind of work with any style. He can work with the high flyers. He can work with the other technical guys. He can work with the brawlers. He can work with a lot of different styles. So he's going to be able to go out there and, you know, you get a guy like Rick Swan who, um, you know, the guy is still really young. You know, I remember seeing him years ago when he first debuted in PWG and you saw the potential there. And it just seems like Rick Swan uh, seems to be getting better and better. And not, not, not too many people mention him when it comes to, you know, really good talent on the indie scene. Um, but I think he's going to break out sooner or later where more people know of him. Not to mention that Rich Swan is super entertaining. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, no, no me and the guy, a couple, me and the guy, me and the guy have a couple of PWG shows. He's freaking awesome. And he got one of our shirts, so he's awesome. <laughs> All right. Um, the next match, anything goes. Was we talked about earlier about him being on NXT, Johnny Gargano is going against Matthew Grant's boy, Ethan Page. Now, anything goes, huh? This is going to be, uh, I don't want to say it's a bloodbath, but these guys are going to go at war, I should say. I mean, this was going on since, what, the uh, Evolve shows are going on in WrestleMania? Um, I don't know, I want to say it's the end of the feud, but I can see a war going on between these two. I don't know about you guys, but it's going to be a freaking war. I I really do kind of see this as the end of the feud, you know, the whole story of Gargano bringing in Ethan Page and then Ethan Page turning on Gargano um, definitely has been a good story and evolved. And it's, I think it's been kind of the most consistent story going forward. Um, and I think with this anything goes match, it kind of, uh, it kind of puts, it puts an end to it. And, you know, who knows uh, Who knows what happens with Gargano going forward. If he does get signed by WWE, this is going to be a big, big loss for Evolve because Gargano has been one of their staples. So I think with this match, you get a guy like Ethan Page and you put him over, you kind of created a new star. Um, and that's good because Ethan Page, especially with the loss of Josh Alexander. I think a lot of people are kind of questioning if he can go out there as a singles competitor and make it. Um, And I think this match is going to prove it. 
Yeah. With the with the rumors that Gargano's possibly going to WWE, um, well, it's pretty much confirmed. Whether it's going to be a just a one time deal or if it's going to be permanent is another thing that we don't know. But if it is something that ends up being permanent, I could see this being used as his farewell match or one of his farewell matches, and what a way to go out then with Ethan Page and an Anything Goes match, and I think this match is going to be completely insane, and it's going to be one of the matches that you're going to want to see off of this show. Yeah. When it's all said and done. Well, I don't know if Johnny Gargano is going to WWE or not, or if he's going to be there permanently, but I can tell you this, though. This, if this is going to be one of his last matches, and the independent scene, what a good way. Uh, this would be huge for Ethan Page. I'll tell you that right now. Well, that's just All right. speculation not on my part, but that's just... Yeah. If it is, if he does get signed to WWE and this is one of his last matches, then it's going to be a great way to go out. All right. Well, we'll see what happens. All right. Um, in the main for the Evolved Championship, you got Timothy Thatcher defending his title against Zack Saber Jr. Holy shit. <laughs> Man, this is going to be um, a technical battle between the two. You know, these guys are two technical um, wrestlers. I mean, freaking Zack Saber Jr. is a fucking Harry Houdini when it comes to submission. He does all these crazy submission moves that you never see. And it just seems like he just to do anything he wants in the ring. He will fucking pull it off great submissions. And uh seen him try PWG a couple of times. Man. He's freaking amazing in the ring. Timothy Thatcher, he's come maybe be a top 10 wrestler. Or, or he could put it away. He could be in the top 10 in the list of uh, WH Wrestler of the Year. So he's having a great phenomenal year. A lot of things this year. And um, and he's deserving to, evolve, um, to carry the Evolve title. Um, I could say it's going to be a technical match. Maybe you could say tech. Technical city, if you want to say. <laughs> um, uh, anybody want to give a thoughts for, for this match, the main event? This is going to be absolutely insane. Uh, two of the te- best technical wrestlers out there. You know, we've seen Zack Sabre Jr. go out there with Chris Hero. We've seen Timothy Thatcher go out there with Chris Hero, but we've never really seen these guys work together. And, you know, Timothy Thatcher is the kind of guy where – when he's applying submissions and he's going out there and doing his technical stuff and doing his striking, he does it like he is trying to really hurt you. While Zach Sabre Jr., he does it more of just trying to make you give up. Timothy Thatcher wants to hurt you while Zach Sabre Jr. just kind of does it to win the match. Um, but these guys are both at the top of their game and they're just, and they're getting better, which is like really scary because they're already some of the best wrestlers in the world and they're getting better. Um, this is going to be great. Uh, definitely, this is probably going to be worth the price of admission or the price of the IK per view alone. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Nathan, you have a comment on this match? Um, I just have a quick question before I actually get, in my comment, or get into my comments, but how long has Thatcher been the champion? Oh, this Involved? is going to be his first event. Okay. Yeah, he at the last at the last evolve show he took the both okay. the titles from uh, Drew Galloway. I knew it was recently, but I just couldn't remember how recent it was. But that being said, it's his first defense, so I have a feeling that Thatcher will win because there's no way that a company like Evolve is going to do that unless there's extenuating circumstances, which I don't think there are. But either way, no matter who wins, if Zack Sabre Jr. Decide, or does win or if Timmy, Timothy Thatcher retains, like I said, he probably will. I think this match is going to be one of the matches that you need to see in addition to the co-main event that we just talked about. Like, if you're going to buy this pay-per-view, buy it for this match alone. Because I think it's yeah. going to steal the show. Easily. Because both these guys are capable of doing that. Yeah, definitely. Um, all you guys should check that out. Um, 
that is going to be this Saturday in, in uh, Queens, New York. If you're not going to be in the area, you should order it at www.nlive.com. Um, it's sure it's going to be a great show. Well, that's not the only show Evolve's having. The next day, which the show that Tom's going to go to in Long Island, um, it's going to be taking place um, at the Fordham, if I'm not mistaken, Tom. Is that the name of the place? Yeah, it's going to be in Deer Park, uh, which is in Long Island, um, of all 48. And, uh, yeah, should be, like I said, I, I, the Long Island shows are always, uh, I went to one of them, uh, about a year, year and a half ago. Um, very good. And, um, like I said, hoping, hoping to go to at least one of these shows, but, you know, both these, both, like I said, both these cards are like, are, are, are stacked, you know? Yeah, definitely. I'm going to check this out for a second. Um, for, for anybody attending, just head down to Deer Park. You guys want to go there if you're in the New York area. It's gonna take, this show's going to start at uh, 8 p.m. Eastern time, so you guys don't want to miss it. Um, I, I just got one of the matches. The, the, there's a tag team attraction match that's going on. It's going to be Duke Gulak teaming up with Tracy Williams going against Mike Bailey and Ray Hornet. Um like I said, I'm not familiar with J.C. Williams' work. Uh, I'm interested to see him and Gulak team up against two guys who will be playing around there, around, and um, interested to see how these guys are going to pull off this tag match. I wish I could give out more comments to it because uh, I'm not familiar with uh, Williams' work, but um, but uh, I know what Gulak could do. I know what Hornets could do, and I know what um, what Mike Bailey could do. But I don't know if you guys any me comments uh, of this tag match. Should be good. You know, Drew Gulak and Tracy Williams seem to be kind of forming a tag team. So uh, it should be interesting to see what happens as a result of this match. Um, you know, it's basically going to be two technical guys going against uh, two high flyers. So it should, be, uh, should be good to see how these guys work together. I'm just interested in it because, well, Mike, Mike Bailey is in it plus Drew Gulak, and like I said earlier, Tracy Williams I don't know too much about. Ray Horace, I've only seen a handful of his matches, but given what I know about two guys in this match, I think it's guaranteed to be good. And normally, um, norm- like when I first looked at the show, because my brain is tired, I looked at it and I thought it was a four-way, so I was going to say something completely different from what I'm about to say, but given that it's a tag match, it'll be interesting to see how it plays out and who's in the ring with each other at what time and what exactly they're capable of doing uh, with each other. Yeah, definitely. Um, Evolve 41 rematch. Ethan Page versus Rich Swan. Um, I want to so I was not actually, no, I'm taking it back. Uh, I thought I said I was going to be at the, sh- that, that's the show I was at, but no, 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 that was just some other time. But um, interesting to see, if you're using Ethan Page in all these matches with uh, guys like Rich Swan and Johnny Gargano back to back. I think it's good for Ethan Page. He's, go- he's going, to me, he's like, Johnny Gargano and Rich Swan are, are are like the top guys when you fall. If you want to add Ricochet in there? Go for it. Um, but Ricochet, the type of guy that like he can't you can't guarantee he'll be the next show. But yeah, they should see what what they do with Ethan Page after these evolve shows because he's they're playing them against um, bigger guys back to back nights, and uh, we'll see what will happen. But that's a match. I'm pretty sure it's gonna be a good match. Um, Rich Swan flying around. Uh, Ethan Page, the total asshole like he always is. <laughs> it's, it's all a good match. And so um, I don't know what you guys thought about this match. Um, yeah, you know I saw their Evolve 41 match. It was uh, it was really good, and uh, I I expect this is going to be just as good, if not even better. Um, I didn't see their first match, but I'm wondering just how. Their styles are going to mesh, and I'm pretty sure that they'll be really well together, but it'll be interesting to see 
um, how Ethan Page and his technical ability matches with or with uh, Rich Swan and his high flying capabilities, um, because I think they'll really co- go a long way in complementing each other. Yeah, but we'll see what happens. Um, so you want Ethan Page? The next match I'm about to uh, come out with is um, there's a special challenge match. It's Johnny Gargano going against Ethan Page's mystery opponent. Um, is, do you guys want to give? A, do you guys have any ideas who it could be? I don't. I doubt it'll be Josh Alexander. <laughs> but um, yeah, who do you guys think could be Ethan Page's a mystery opponent for Johnny Gargano? It's tough to say. I feel like Ethan Page might bring out someone from Gargano's past, um, but it could be just somebody else. Uh, it is, like I said, it's it's right now. It's tough to say who it could be, but that's uh, that that's the great about this is that it could be could be anybody. So that's why, you know, got to order the event and see what happens. Yeah, pretty much what Tom said. I mean, I'm not sure exactly what to expect because it could literally – are they talking about somebody who's on the roster now or are they talking about someone who hasn't been seen for a while? You know, they could pull out anything. Or they could have somebody who's never even appeared in Evolve make an appearance. So. All right, we'll see. Maybe you we're gonna get uh, a Canadian talent. We'll see. Uh, we'll, we'll find out this Sunday. Um, former partners collide. You have Trent Ferreira going against Caleb Conley. Holy shit! Oh, just a, a, anybody's confused. Um, Trent Ferreira got kicked out of the Premier Athletes brand due to the fact that he he did not help out um, Phil Calval at the last Evolve show. So, so yes. Yeah. Out there, if you guys are confused, so yeah, he's no longer in the Premier Athlete brand. Um, uh, but yeah, definitely. Pretty much. Any guys have uh, thoughts on this match? Which match is it? Because I'm not seeing it on the sheet that I'm looking at. It's Trent Beretta against uh, Caleb Conley. Um, yeah, I mean, either way, it's going to be a good match. I don't, I could care less who wins. My, my gut feeling would say Trent Preto will probably win, but Caleb Conley will, could easily win. And it's going to be a match that no matter who wins, it's going to be great. So, because both guys, when you watch them, they always deliver no matter who they're in the ring with. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah, I was going to say, you know, former former Premier Athlete brand partners. Um, I do have a feeling that Connolly might go over just to kind of build up the Premier Athlete brand, and they really seem to be uh, pushing Caleb Connolly kind of slowly. So it wouldn't be wouldn't be too shocking to see Connolly go over in this. Um, but it should be it should be a great match either way. Yes, definitely. Um, Battle of the Best. I saw this match with PWG. It ended up in a bloody mess. But uh, Chris Hero going against Zach Zaver Jr. Um, yes, it was it was a bloody mess at at Reseda, California. You know, it looked Chris Hero looked na- finger looked nasty. I was right there. I saw the whole thing. You know, fucking. Exactly, but you had blood all over him. It was it was sick. Um, they'd still pull up a good match, anyways. And uh, let's see if it happens again. Maybe we'll see more blood. Who knows? <laughs> I doubt this time over there in Deer Park you'll see blood out there. But um, let's see what's gonna happen. See the two. Uh, let's see the story performance at uh from PWG. I don't know if you guys got thoughts of this match. Yeah, I mean, 
it's gonna be gonna be great stuff here. Uh, I, I'm still waiting on Mystery Vortex 3 to see this match, but what I saw from the preview, uh, Chris Hero's finger got fucked up. Um, and it should, like I said, it should be a great match. Two of the top technical guys in there, they're going to beat the shit out of each other. It's its going to be, like I said, another match that's really worth buying these shows for and going to see it because uh, both these guys are at the top of their game. And... It's uh, it's stuff like this that really uh, that really sets apart a lot of the independent scene from from another. You know, you look at companies like PWG and Evolve that are booking these shows, and people people love these matches. So uh, hopefully, Chris Hero's finger remains intact on uh, on the show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hope so too. I mean, it was it was a bloody mess on that 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 show. Um, Nate, you got thoughts on this match? Um, just that I think it's going to be one of the stiffest matches we've seen in a while because both these guys are capable of hitting hard. Um, I just think these guys are just going to beat the shit out of each other. So I think both guys will probably, or one or both guys will probably get busted open. It's just, it's going to be a fight and it's going to be awesome to watch. It may be. And I can't wait. I'm going to be if there's gonna be blood, I sometimes this time I think Zack Saber Jr. is gonna be the one bleeding. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, last one. Uh, the main event is gonna be this is a non-title match. It's gonna be Timothy Thatcher going against Biff Music. Another fucking technical city match right there. Um, they're gonna be hard hitting uh, submissions. Um. Like what Fifty you said in the show in the past, which is going to be part of the uh, bolo show we're going to have on uh, on the twentieth here in here in WH Radio. This music said himself, he's gonna he likes getting hit, getting hit hard. Um, you know he's going to get hit hard by uh, Tim Thatcher. So um, yeah, it's going to be uh, a brutal. It's going to be a fight. So that's going to be your main event, non-title match, and it's. And if music performs like he, he does really usually does, he could get a he could probably be involved uh or or drag a USA title pitcher in the future. Or maybe pretty soon, you know, if if these perform really well. So, um guess any guys thoughts on the main event. You know, this match happened uh at PWG Mystery Vortex uh three as well. I can't wait to see that. Can't wait to see this. Uh, these guys definitely know each other well. Uh, should be another another hard hitting, great match. And you added the no holds barred stipulation, and it's going to get only crazier. So, uh, good main event, booked by Evolve, and uh, definitely something for everyone to look forward to. Um, what intrigues me about this match the most? is the fact that it's non-title because it opens up a few scenarios. I mean, the first, the uh, Evolve 47, you've got the title match between Thatcher and Zack Sabre Jr. And there is a possibility, like if I'm thinking as a booker and I'm thinking show to show, if they want to put the main event of Evolve 48 over, they could easily have Biff Busick run in and cost Thatcher the title so Zack Sabre Jr. would win it and then it would add more fuel to the fire come their match at Evolve 48. And I think if they did that, that would be a great story. I don't know. That's just fantasy booking on my part. But either way, I think this match is going to be excellent. And no matter how they do it, if they do it like I said they could, or if it's just that none of that happens, and if it's just a straight-up match, non-title, then either way, it's going to be freaking awesome. Yeah, definitely. Well, um, that was the Bob um, show that we just announced. And... uh you guys should check it out. If, if you're not going to be in the New York area, just go to WWNLive.com and you can check out um, events. Um, if I are, you should do that. All right, let's uh, close out the show. Uh, let's get a little over.
Summer Sonic, but um, it's the biggest time for us to give us some plus. Um, uh, just follow Wrestling Heads on Twitter, um, Instagram, Google Plus, uh, Periscope. I was I did record a uh, did a Periscope when uh, maybe a few minutes before the Super Kick around the world happened. <laughs> you can say. Uh, yeah, just follow us on Periscope as well. And, um, yeah, go to, visit us at WrestlingHeads.com. So we put the latest news and everything that's going on. Check out the blogs as well. Some of the writers team blogging stuff about uh, wrestling. So you guys should check that out as well. And uh, you guys can follow me at Sinister632 on Twitter, Instagram, uh, Periscope. Oh, and also I forgot to mention, Go to Pro Wrestling Tees. Support us. Go to ProWrestlingTees.com slash Wrestling Heads and buy a shirt. Or come see me or Skits at a show around California. Um, and uh, once again, I'm not to disrespect big dudes or anything like that, but uh, when when we carry the box, it's just we don't have more than a 2X. So if, uh, if you were looking for a 3X or a p- higher than that, I suggest you to go to ProWrestlingTees.com slash Wrestling Heads, and you can probably get a shirt if you're that plus size. Um, so, yeah, check that out. Because usually you don't carry that much, that, that big size uh, on, on with us in our, in our little box we have there. So uh, I just want to put that out there. Um, and, yeah, follow Skits. We call it under at WH Skits. And uh, if you want to hear past episodes, go to... Either go to youtube.com slash wrestlehands. You can check out all those videos. We had interviews like Biff Busick or Chili or Melissa or my alone interview with uh, Sue Young or uh, Cage or Celestia Sparks. Just check them all, check the, all that out um, on uh, YouTube slash wrestlingheads. Um, yeah, and don't forget, uh, on, on August 20th, we're going to have Biff Busick on just to preview Bola, and we're going to have the show on earlier at 9 p.m., so you don't want to miss that out. Um, all right. Well, who wants to give other plugs? Yep, you can follow me on Twitter at to tweet me. Uh, pretty sure my Periscope is the same thing, but I'm rarely on there. But if you follow me, I'll follow you. Watch your stuff. Um, make sure... You guys are following the rest of the Elite Podcast Network at Elite Podcast Net. Of course, Monday and Thursday, Wrestling Heads. And like Oscar said, next Thursday, big Bola preview show. Um, Going to have on Beth Busick and maybe some other people as well. Who knows? Um, and every Tuesday and Wednesday is the Indie Power Rankings. Um, of course, be on the three count and the Uncle Mike and Tom show. Uh, release shows every Thursday around there, around every Thursday or Friday. Uh, Hacker Scotty O'Shea wrestling with myself every Thursday as well. Definitely recommend checking that out. Get a wrestler's perspective. Of course, Eyes on the Ring every Sunday. And uh, before I pass it on to Nathan, uh, this is definitely something I wanted to throw out there to people. Uh, this Saturday, uh, Fighting Back is happening in Canada. It's actually Fighting Back 5. Um, it is going to be a charity event, uh, for the Canadian Can- uh, Cancer Society, uh, guys like Ultimo Dragon, Roderick Strong, um, th- they're going to be in the house. It's going to be a big show. All proceeds are going to the Canadian Can- Cancer Society. So if you're in the Canada area, make sure you guys go and check that out. I believe it's in Ottawa, um, so if you're in the area, make sure you check it out. But there's also another way if you're not in Canada to check it out. Uh, technically today, Friday, uh, 3.30 p.m. Eastern, uh, the guys over at New Legacy, Inc., of course, big wrestling fans, and they do a bunch of bunch of silly stuff on YouTube and gaming streams and all that. They're doing a 24-hour stream uh, in coordination with uh, Fighting Back. Uh, so you can donate through there or just go and check them out at hitbox.tv backslash fighting back. If you don't have anything to donate, they said just uh, just come out and watch them watch them do some silly wrestling stuff, and they may have some wrestlers on as well just to uh, answer some questions or whatever, but it's all for a good cause. It's all 
for uh, kicking cancer straight in the ball and get, get a pile driver. So uh, make sure you guys aren't doing anything. Make sure you guys head on out and have a good time and help a good cause. Nate, you want to go your uh, plug? And uh, you can follow me, um, Nathan, at, or on Twitter, at Headliner5. We are, or you can follow Eyes on the Ring, at Eyes on the Ring. We did not do a show last Sunday. Um, the last I heard, we were planning on doing one tomorrow night. So I'm not completely sure on that, but hopefully... That will end up happening, and if that does end up happening, I am at work until 10 o'clock my time. So for the first time since Eyes on the Ring started, I will not be on right away. But as soon as I get home, I will call in, and me and True and the rest of the Eyes on the Ring team will bring you the show as planned. And then we also will have another show coming up this Sunday, back at our regular scheduled time. And in the meantime, you can follow Eyes on the Ring at Eyes on the Ring and visit eyesonthering.com for everything um, from articles, tweets, uh, the Eyes on the Ring album, which sparked the Eyes on the Ring concept and movement. So uh, go and support us and support the Elite Podcast Network. All right, definitely. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're about to end the show. I guess until Monday, we're out. See ya, bitches. Peace. Peace.